welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about the life expectancy of different storage media, including hard drives, SSDs, and optical disks. This is a subject I'm frequently being asked about, so let's go and get started. Here we have a selection of magnetic, solid state, and optical storage media. In optimal conditions, data stored on magnetic media can last several decades, with tape cartridges having up to a 30 year lifespan. However, the average life expectancy of a hard drive is generally reported to be between 3 and 7 years in typical use. The life expectancy of solid state storage depends on the type of flash memory cells on which it's based and how many times they've been rewritten. But as a rough guide, modern branded SSDs should last at least 5 to 10 years in typical use. This noted data may be lost after a year or two if the SSD is left unpowered. Finally, when it comes to writable optical storage, some high quality media can retain data for several decades. However, it's also not uncommon for low quality media to be unusable after a couple of years. As you may gather, it's incredibly difficult to predict the exact life expectancy of any particular kind of digital media. Not least, this is because it depends on the type and intensity of use, environmental conditions, and any time spent in long-term storage. This video is therefore based on the best information I can find, with many references included in the video description. It's also important to keep in mind that any average life expectancy figure lies at the middle of a normal statistical distribution. I note this because, when I published a video about SSD life expectancy, some people commented that the average figures I gave were wrong because they owned a drive that had lasted for a far longer or shorter period. And so, we must remember that an average figure does not become invalid due to an occasional outlier, such as a drive with a factory defect that fails after a few days, weeks, or months. Hard drives read and write data to spinning magnetic platters using heads that float just above their surface. The heads are moved between tracks by actuator arms, and the fact this all works so reliably is amazing. Generally, the death of a hard drive is due to the failure of a mechanical part, such as a motor, or a scratch on a drive platter caused by a head crashing into its surface. However, the circuit board controller on a hard drive may also fail, for example, following a power surge. So, how long will a hard drive last? Well, the two largest manufacturers, Seagate and Western Digital, offer warranties of two years on entry-level models, rising to five years on higher-end and enterprise hardware. And this clearly indicates that they expect most of their drives to last at least this long. Other estimates vary, with ArcServe suggesting that hard drives last three to five years, whilst the Enterprise Storage Forum reports the company should plan for hard drives to last from four to seven years. Some data storage organisations have also published research findings. For example, in March 2023, Secure Data Recovery revealed an analysis of 2007 failed hard drives. Here, the average failed drive had been powered for 25,233 hours, or just over two years, 10 months. In May 2023, cloud storage provider Backblaze reported a larger study of 17,155 failed drives, where the average failed drive had been powered for 22,360 hours, or just over two years, six months. Now, whilst this is all excellent data, it does not directly imply that most hard drives last for less than three years. For a start, Whilst the age of a hard drive and its powered on hours are likely to be very similar for drives operating in a data center, this will not be the case in many consumer environments where PCs and laptops are not normally powered 24 seven. And very importantly, as both studies only looked at failed units, longer lasting drives were less likely to have been included in the experimental sample. 
Highlighting this point, in 2021, Backblaze had reported that 90% of its hard drives had been running for at least four years, with 65% running for at least six years. Given that Backblaze operates over 200,000 consumer quality hard drives in its data centers, this analysis suggests that if we buy a new hard drive, it has a two-thirds chance of operating for at least six years. However, before we get too excited, it's worth remembering that this data relates to hard drives running in a data center in ideal environmentally controlled conditions. In contrast, drives in consumer PCs, and in particular in laptops and external enclosures, are likely to be subject to physical shocks, vibrations, power surges, and temperature changes that may considerably reduce their lifespan. And so, my earlier assertion that most hard drives will last three to seven years does remain a reasonable proposition. But there is no doubt that some hard drives will run much longer, and personally, I own two 20-year-old Western Digital Raptors that are still working perfectly. Finally, it's worth noting that hard drives are subject to data fade or bit rot over time. This means that if you write data to a new drive and then store it for 20 years, the data may no longer be readable even if the drive remains in perfect working order. This is due to magnetic field decay and can only be protected against by regularly refreshing data by rewriting it. How often this needs to occur is a matter of debate, but rewriting the contents of a hard drive every five years is probably wise, and every two years for critical archive or backup files. Next, let's reflect on the life expectancy of other magnetic media. Still today, data cartridges containing a spool of tape remain popular for backups or archiving purposes. As noted earlier, when stored in optimal conditions, these may retain information for up to 30 years. And whilst this older version 3 linear open tape cartridge only stores 400 gigabytes of uncompressed data, the latest LTO9 cartridges in the same form factor offer 18 terabytes of non-compressed storage for around $100. Over the years, many other removable magnetic media have been used for data storage, including floppy disks, zip and jazz cartridges, and even Sinclair microdrives. These may all in theory have a life expectancy of 5 to 10 years, and possibly far more. But for most users, their lifespan has now been constrained by the lack of availability of hardware able to read them. Solid state drives, or SSDs, store data in flash memory cells on flash memory chips. The memory cells are usually NAND logic gates, with two technologies commonly employed, named floating gate and charge trap flash. To write or program data, a voltage is applied to move electrons into the floating gate or charge trap. This changes the resistance between the memory cell source and drain, which can be measured by passing a current between them. Whilst NAND flash cells can be individually written, they can only be erased in blocks. To do this, a voltage is applied to remove the electrons from the floating gate or charge trap. However, repeated program arrays operations weaken the materials the cells are made from, which results in electrons either escaping a floating gate or being retained in the charge trap. And, after a certain number of program arrays or PE cycles, it therefore becomes impossible for the cells to reliably function. The number of PE cycles a flash memory cell can sustain in part depends on how much data it has to hold. Initially, all SSDs stored just one bit of data per cell, which we now refer to as Single Level Cell or SLC. However, to scale up capacities for a reasonable cost, Multi-level cell or MLC SSDs were developed, followed by triple-level cell or TLC and quad-level cell or QLC. These store more bits per memory cell by distinguishing additional states between fully programmed and fully erased. However, as the cell wears out and electrons stray, it's more difficult to distinguish these extra states, which means that the cells can endure fewer PE cycles. 
The average number of PU cycles is different for consumer and enterprise hardware and also varies between models and manufacturers. But as a guide, today SLC drives can sustain about 100,000 PE cycles, MLC between about 3,000 and 10,000, TLC between 500 and 3,000, and QLC between 300 and 1,000. And today, manufacturer guarantees tend to reflect the lower end of this range. For example, Samsung's 1TB 990 EVO and 990 Pro SSDs have a warranty of 600TB written, which equates to 600 PE cycles for these TLC drives. And it's no surprise that the 2TB models based on the same flash memory cells have 1200TB written warranties. This also highlights how, if you want an SSD that can endure a lot of write activity, it's wise to choose one with the highest capacity you can afford. Today, almost all end-user SSDs are TLC or QLC, and I know this worries many people. But even a 600 terabyte written warranty for Samsung's 1 terabyte TLC SSDs equates to 100 gigabytes written every day for 6,000 days, or 16.4 years. And today, most manufacturers do claim that their SSDs should last 10 years or more in normal use. However, I've never seen a warranty greater than 5 years, and so stating the average life expectancy of an SSD to be between 5 and 10 years in normal use is a reasonable, if potentially conservative, proposition. This point noted, SSDs can suffer from data fade, as, over time, electrons may leak from their floating gates or charge traps. This is more likely to occur at high or low temperatures and if the memory cells have endured a high proportion of their viable PE cycles. To mitigate this problem, modern SSD controllers use a read scrub technology that scans the drive during idle periods and rewrites the data in any flash memory block that has fallen below a safe retention threshold. In theory, this means that a regularly powered SSD ought to be able to retain data for the full life of the drive. Unfortunately, when an SSD is not powered, it cannot execute refresh operations, and this will limit how long data is retained. In 2010, the Joint Electron Device Engineering Council, or JEDEC, set an SSD standard that requires client SSDs to retain data for 365 days when powered off and stored at 30 degrees. Today, new SSDs from compliant manufacturers will probably retain data for two or more years when powered off and stored at a moderate temperature. However, if you intend to use SSDs as archived media, do not use drives that have endured most of their PE cycles, do not store above 30 degrees, and ideally leave the drive powered for several hours on at least an annual basis. Memory cards and USB thumb drives are based on the same solid state technology as SSDs and therefore ought to exhibit the same life expectancy characteristics. And, indeed, the SD Card Association claim that the lifespan of an SD card is now 10 years or more in normal use. However, to protect data, always safely eject USB flash drives and memory cards before removing them. And, as with SSDs, there is no guarantee that a non-powered USB drive or memory card will retain data for any length of time, and personally I wouldn't trust one to keep data safe for more than a year. Writable optical media record data by using a laser to change the properties of a layer of dye. Many different kinds of dyes and other materials can be used to make writable and rewritable CDs, DVDs and Blu-ray discs. And all of these produce media with different data retention characteristics. It's not uncommon for the data on some writable optical media to fade after only a few years. However, if high-quality branded media are used, data is recorded at a moderate speed, and the disks are stored in a cool, dry environment, optical disks can make excellent archive media. And, for me personally, 
This generally means using verbatim's gold archival media written at the lowest speed my software and drives support. Whilst researching this video, I came across this fantastic paper from the Canadian Conservation Institute. This explains the data retention characteristics of disks made from all possible materials and concludes with this excellent table that charts their average life expectancy. In summary, this tells us that the highest quality writable CDs should retain data for at least 20 years, with gold disks expected to last 100 years or more. Gold DVD-R should then last at least 50 years, and gold BDR at least 10 years. In general, rewritable media have a shorter life expectancy, as do higher capacity multi-layer disks. Long-time viewers of this channel may recall that in 2016 I made a video on M-Disc, which is a form of DVD-R and BDR media that uses inorganic rather than organic dyes. In theory, this allows M-Discs to retain data for 1,000 years, although tests of this are inevitably based on accelerated ageing. Note that data has to be written to M-Discs using a special burner, although they can be read in most standard optical drives. Usually, when I mention optical media, there are comments that nobody uses them anymore and that hardware is no longer available. However, Quality internal and external drives do remain on the market, such as the external Pioneer BDR X13, which was launched in 2022. This is absolutely not a product for the average consumer, but it's far cheaper than a tape drive and allows the creation of long term archival media. As the ancient Egyptians proved, the second best way to immortalise data is to carve it into stone. However, the very best way to ensure that your information is never lost is to encode it into a self-replicating media such as living DNA. Unfortunately, right now, stone and DNA are not available as a general means of digital data storage. However, we can all copy DNA's trick of constantly replicating data to maintain it, and I hope that in that context, this video has given you useful information on when different types of storage media need to be duplicated. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.